1395, Adelaide's 5AA. This is Richard Pascoe. At 23 minutes past two here on 5AA. Remember, give me a call, 8223 Unrecognised South Australians, I think. is Unrecognised, that's not the right word, is it, Steve Davis? No, probably hiding in plain sight. There, there we that's go. That, well, that's a few words, Steve. So, <laughs> it is, yeah, not eloquent. <laughs> yeah, not eloquent at all. So, yeah, well, we like, you know, and you and I, when we get together, we talk about different uh, people around the place, don't we, Steve? We do. Always a story. Always <laughs> a story for people as well. And we've probably highlighted the last few weeks... Um, what do we call them, unsung South Australian stories? Yeah, look, we'll keep working on that. They're basically the stories behind a lot of small business people. We see them in their business, but we don't know their background, and they are just diverse, amazing, as today's will be. Who have you got for us today, Steve? I want to tell you about David Olney, and uh, he is a consultant in, in strategy, uh, an analy- analyst, a lecturer, a podcaster, but I suppose the thing a lot of people notice about him is he's blind. And in fact, uh, one of his podcasts is called Blind Insights with David Olney. So he's up front with that, and there is so much. This, this He is a walking brain like you wouldn't believe. I, I met him, as you know, I uh, did some mentoring with him, and if anyone's curious and learning more about him, davidolney.com.au, that's his website. But let me tell you, I've seen blind people walking around. I've seen David walking around with the cane. And if I'm on the footpath, I just make sure that I'm not in their way. Okay. But what's it actually like? And he told me, he said, it takes courage to walk around with just a cane. And he was lucky when he was taught back in the early days uh, Roly Stewart was his teacher, uh, who some people might know. Um, he said, you need confidence before becoming confident with a cane. And so he would start his students really slow, really simple stuff. And then as you're starting to feel confident with it, push yourself a bit further. Go somewhere else. Take a different type of uh, footpath. Yeah, go further. And if you think about it, seriously, how you and I would struggle if, if we're walking around oh, blindfolded. Yes. Yeah. Just dust my head in. Um, I asked him whether, because you know how we've seen those things appear over the last few years in the urban landscape, those little ridges at the edge of the traffic lights and you know, tactile things here and there. David says they actually do make a big difference. I, I thought they were just, you know, goody two shoes, little uh, uh, flourishes, but they actually do make a, a good Um, change to life. However, this thing about courage, he told me that he was walking along a footpath one day and someone had trimmed their hedge but left this big branch sticking out about head height. Of course, the cane only checks the ground. That's right. And he, at full pace, this branch put a huge gash. He almost lost his left eye. There was blood everywhere. The poor guy's on the pavement. Some bystanders got him some help. It's been patched up now with a, by a magnificent surgeon. But he said, this is why blind people, you know, wear glasses and hats. It's actually for that protection, for that head high stuff, which I hadn't thought of. I no, just, I just now you've said it. Yeah, it all makes sense, doesn't it? It does. So that's, that's sort of his, his background on that front. But then um, university, he did two degrees uh, as a young man. He studied politics and also music. Now, there's a, I suppose the closest we've got to that is uh, Mr. Garrett uh, from Midnight Oil. I was, gonna, who, I was just <laughs> trying to think about that as well. Good heavens, politics and music. Yes, and you can be your own judge as to how that went. Yes. But um, something that had a profound impact on him was three of his um, friends at uni went off to become army officers. And he was fat because he, he wanted to be in the army, but of course he couldn't because of his sight impairment. Um, so he followed their careers with interest. And then as they got deployed, he got more and more interested in, in all the strategic decisions being made that put them either in or out of harm's way. And so he started devouring everything you could find about strategic culture, unconventional conflict. And then 9-11 happened. And he just happened to be at Adelaide Uni at that time. He was um, doing a doctorate. And they tapped him on the shoulder and said, you've got to come and teach this, which he did. He started teaching 
are all things to do with creative um, problem solving, especially in in that complex theatre of war, which then got him on the radar of two commando SAS and the special operations engineers, and he got seconded to them. So they had him, they had a blind man being fed the information of different scenarios using his complex thinking skills to come up with solutions that would surprise the enemy and keep our people safe. And we're talking Afghanistan, we're talking all sorts of places. And um, I know if he was here, you'd say to him, well, tell me, what do you think's going to happen in Ukraine? Well, I asked him, do you want to know his insights? Of course I do. <laughs> he says, first of all, Putin is having the time of his life. He's shown the US, China and Europe that he can do what he wants. He's basically controlled the whole media cycle. And yeah. the message is never discount Russia. And interesting to note, Russia and China did some war games back in 2019. Russia kicked China's butt every single time. And David's gut at the moment, going by what he's seen, is that Putin isn't actually seriously thinking of going into Ukraine. This is all for the other bit, because he's got his big force, he says his force is a one-shot affair. So he's got to be really careful about the times when he does pull the trigger. So there you go. little insight from um, from David Olney on that front. Um, but I've got to tell you, some, he's now be, he's been headhunted by a US marketing company because he's now doing strategic communications. And so he said there's a lot of... Uh, oh, actually, really, really important about this strategic thinking. There's a big difference, he found, because today's the 80th anniversary of the bombing of Darwin Harbour by right. the Japanese. If you go back to the World War II, he made a really interesting comment. He said, in the 1940s, in allied countries, we had really good um, groups of people who could do creative thinking and, and problem solving. That's what got us out of the pickle. You know, the, we've seen all the movies that hone in on this. We've lost those skills en masse. And so um, that's also why he's in demand. And now he's applying his stuff to, to marketing and business. But I wanted to leave you today with a few different thoughts that he from a blind person's perspective, um, that's quite fascinating. Do you know 70% of blind people are unemployed? Uh, well, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's terrible. Isn't and, it? and look, it, it is hard. And I know that it's, you know, people go with the easiest, lowest hanging fruit when they're recruiting and there's whole sorts of pressures. But there was an interesting side effect of him being a blind lecturer that was interesting. And um, some of the young female students he had uh, came up to him and said, you know what, you actually treated me like I had a brain. I, I didn't feel like I was being judged by my looks the whole time. So that's something in his favour. He's got no choice on that front. So uh, it was just interesting how that created a different environment. And you could imagine if you were blind, you would have a pretty good reason to be pretty peeved with the world and feeling like, ah. I'm not saying he never feels like that, but I will say this. He is a great student of two philosophical schools, the Stoics from ancient Rome and the Anarchists of the 19th century. And he said, here's something anyone listening today could do if they want to. And you've said this, uh, Richard, you and I have known each other. There's been a few times when you've told me to take a teaspoon of cement. You know, <laughs> either it has. Uh, and he said, here's how the Stoics taught it. They would actually, once a week, sometimes once a month, once a week, do something uncomfortable all day. So if it's cold, yep. have one less layer of clothing. Just experience it. Because th their view was there's bad stuff that's going to happen. Don't fear it. Train for it. Know what it's like to be hungry. Know what it's like to be cold, etc. Mm. So there's something. And the very last thing, hilarious story from his past. He remembers, and do you remember the, the cinemas that used to be in Hindmarsh Square? Yes, I do. The back, Academy. Back in the, yes. He's got a memory burned into his brain. He, a mate took him to see a movie called 15 Minutes, which I've never seen. Have you seen it? No. No, Robert De Niro. And um, there, it's, it actually shocked audiences at the time with a really gruesomely violent scene. Robert De Niro is basically being tortured and beaten by some Russian thugs, like pushing the boundaries of cinema. Everyone is in the audience is just silent. You know, 
they're just lost. But the dialogue that the Russian thugs are doing was sharp, razor sharp comedy, like really black humour. Everyone was winded by just how gruesome it was because David couldn't see that. So he is one person in this cinema laughing his head off <laughs> hysterically. <laughs> his friend said at the end of the movie, everyone else left that cinema on the farthest aisle possible from this crazy man <laughs> who laughed his head off <laughs> that scene. So there you go. Some insights from um, David Olney's life in and around South Australia. Pretty interesting guy. <laughs> it sounds very interesting. How can people find out more about him, Steve? Well, he's got a website, davidolney.com.au. He blogs about uh, strategy, all sorts of things, uh, and really interesting man to follow up. That's very good. And, Steve, how can you help people? Well, I mean, luckily I met David because I'm part of a, a program at the moment. Uh, we can do three hours of mentoring with any small business. It's $44, yeah, three hours. We go deep. We do as much help as we can. And all the details are at talkedaboutmarketing.com, just there on the front page. Love to help. And these stories, just amazing. It's very good. Steve, we come back next week and give me another one? Try and keep me away. All right. Thanks, Steve. Steve, you have a good rest of the day and enjoy the Fringe tomorrow. I will. No, <laughs> Let the whirlwind begin. That's what we like. Thanks very much, Steve.